Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to 31 Days of Pompoween. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Pompberry, and this month I'm releasing one new Halloween tutorial a day to celebrate the greatest day of the year. I did the same thing last year. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a link up here to the playlist. If you're not new here, then welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying Pompoween so far. And today I'm going to be doing Amethyst from Steven Universe. And I'm a little bit scared because I've never drawn a gemstone before and the main focus of this look is going to be a realistic gemstone on my chest area that I will hopefully be able to do. We'll see. Why I decide to try things out for the first time on camera? I'm not really sure. I don't know, but I'm hoping it's gonna go well. Now, why amethyst out of all the gems? Well, first off, amethyst is my birthstone and purple is my favorite color. And I also really identify with her character. I think we have a lot in common. And honestly, she's my favorite character on the show. I've also done an amethyst inspired lip art before and I absolutely loved that lip shape that I created and I've always wanted to redo that, but with a full look, not just the lips. So today is that day. So yeah, I think I've said all I've got to say and I hope you're ready for this tutorial. But before I begin, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to hit that little bell button so that you can be notified every time I upload. As I said, this month I'm going to be uploading every day so you're not gonna wanna miss out. There's a lot of cool stuff coming your way. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to check out the other Halloween videos before this one. There's a whole bunch. You can check them out by clicking right up here. I've made a little playlist to make things easier. So now without further ado, let's get started. For the purple base for my skin, I'm going in with the Snazaroo Lilac Water Activated Face Paint. This one is a tiny bit darker than what I'd like it to be, but I will be highlighting so I think it'll be okay. All you have to do is activate it with some water. And I'm going to be using a flat topped fluffy brush to apply this. You can see that this one's actually stained from other face paints. And I just wanna load it up on the brush and I'm going to start start applying, just doing kind of crisscross strokes on my face. I don't want the application to be streaky at all. And I also don't want my brush to be soaking wet. So I'm loading a little bit at a time because I feel like that way I have more control over the application. And you can see it's pretty patchy on the forehead area. So what I'm gonna do is wait for it to dry and then go in with a second layer. And I'm gonna do that all over. And I'm also going to apply that to the rest of my body. My neck, my ears, and I hate doing my ears. Now, water activated face paint is pretty transfer proof. If I touch it, nothing happens, but you still want to avoid friction with your clothing because it can rub off. So I'm going to be very careful while pulling this back up and then I can paint the rest of my arm. Once that's done, it's going to look a little bit streaky, a little bit patchy, but that's okay because now I'm going in with cream colors to highlight and contour, and those will really help to even everything out. So for my highlights, I'm going in with the Mayron Clown White Light. This is just a white cream color, and I really like this particular formula. It's really easy to work with. I'm gonna take a dampened sponge and just apply it to the highest points of my face. Ooh, that's a lot of product. Probably should have used this side of the sponge. Just really making sure that I work that color so that there's no harsh edges. I've never used this sponge before, so it's kind of, it might be a little too small to do this. Okay, got myself a different sponge. This is a lot bigger. You don't want the sponge to be super damp because you don't want to remove what's underneath because any sort of water will reactivate the water activated face paint. I'm gonna go down, bridge of my nose, but doing kind of like a little button nose. So I'm going to highlight there, and then I'm just kind of gonna leave a gap. You kind of wanna do like an exclamation mark on your nose. And then that will go onto the forehead. You can see that helps to even out everything. She has a very, very round face. So I am going to highlight the side of my face and my cheek because I want to make my face seem wider and not slimmer and longer. I'm also going to highlight my cupid's bow area and the top of my chin. I kind of really want to highlight this area here to make my face seem fuller. Basically highlighting the apples of my cheeks. I'm taking that under eye highlight and bringing it further down. Also by highlighting here, I can make my face seem wider. Now that that's all done, I know that my face looks really pale, but we're gonna bring it back with a little bit of contouring. But before that, I'm also gonna take some of that cream color and highlight my collarbone. 
because you can see that the face paint makes the body look super, super flat. And so I wanna add some dimension back with highlighting and contouring, just like you would to the face. And I think this is the most important detail, like when you're doing a completely different skin tone, like green or red or purple or whatever, it's adding back the volume that you lose with the face paint. So you can see that already makes a huge difference. And I'm gonna do that to my shoulders as well. You can also highlight the neck like the muscles on the side. You can also contour the chest area. Then once all that's done, I'm going to contour with the NYX SFX cream color in the color purple. This is just a regular cream color. You could use a grease paint, whatever you've got. And I'm just gonna take my sponge just as I did with the white and then I'm going to contour. Now, as I said, I don't want super defined cheekbones. I'm just kind of going around the perimeter of my cheeks because I do want to accentuate the apples and I'm also really going to try to reduce my chin. She doesn't have a very large chin so this is where I try to make mine disappear. I'm also going to take that contour around my forehead. Now I'm also going to contour the body and I might actually use the smaller sponge for this just so I can try to be more precise. If you don't know where to contour, it's anywhere that it dips naturally. You can do this to really exaggerate your features. And then I know that I have to create a shadow right here because when I'm relaxed, you can't see that shadow. So to add the volume, I'm going to just contour right here while I'm flexing. And then when I'm not flexing, it adds a little bit of that shadow. It's kind of lifting up the paint underneath. So what I like to do is I like to mix in a little bit of the white just to give it coverage. And I find that this white is a lot easier to blend out. So I'm just gonna do that and then darken that area with the purple. But it's going to mix in with the white and I'm gonna be able to blend it out a lot better without lifting what's underneath. I'm also gonna contour here. This purple actually isn't that dark and it's very warm toned, so I'm definitely gonna have to contour with an eyeshadow afterwards to match up the tones a little bit better. If you really, really want to, you can also contour like the muscles in your arms. That will really help with that realism. That is optional. If I were doing a full cosplay, I would definitely contour all my muscles, any sort of skin that's visible. Now, because I used a cream, I'm going to want to set everything to make sure it stays in place and so that I can add eyeshadows on on top so that I can contour. Ooh, I forgot to contour my nose. I'm gonna use the sharp end of the sponge. Also, if you highlighted your neck, don't forget to contour it as well. You wanna make sure that the highlighting and contouring is consistent throughout the entire body. Now you're gonna wanna set everything with a translucent powder, basically just over the areas where you applied the cream. You don't have to set the water activated face paint, but you do need to set the cream. So for this, I'm using the RCMA No Color Powder. It does not come in this little contraption. I put it here and this just allows me to powder everything from afar, making sure that I don't move anything in the process. Just kind of creates a cloud of powder, which I can then take a brush and make sure that it's all evenly spread over everything. You can just apply powder the normal way or with a powder puff, I'm just being extra. Now, because my cheeks are looking very white, I want to bring a little bit of color back into them. I'm gonna go in with the Sugar Pill eyeshadow in the color Frost Teen. This actually has a slight satin finish and I'm just going to apply that kind of all over my cheeks. This is going to help set everything even more and because it's got a satin finish it's going to give a slight glow to the skin that you normally would not get with face paint because since you have to set everything it's all super matte so this is just going to bring a little bit of life back into the skin and do a little bit of highlighting while we're at it. I'm also going to apply that to the body highlights and then I'm going to do a slight bit of contouring with the Strobe Cosmetics Creepy Cute Palette using the color Planchette. I'm just gonna take that and set my contour areas. And this is a very light lilac color, but you can see that it does add a little bit to the contour. I am going to darken the contour in a little bit, but this is just to kind of create a better fade between the contour and the rest of the skin, because I didn't really like how that cream color 
blended. I'm also going to do a very light contouring with this just under my cheeks and I kind of want to round them out. So I'm just going like this doing kind of like a U shape to try to accentuate the apples of the cheeks even more. And then same thing to the body. Now to further intensify all the contours, I'm going in with Sugar Pills Poison Plum. I'm going to be very careful with this because it is quite pigmented. And I'm gonna start at the forehead because I feel like I can go a little bit crazier with this. And if you don't set your cream colors, your eyeshadows will stick to certain areas and won't blend out well. So be sure to really set your cream colors well. That way you can get a nice blend. I'm going to contour a tiny bit right here, then my chin. And then I'm going to get a small fluffy brush so that I can be really precise with my contouring. I'm going to contour right under my bottom lip and kind of take it around the chin to really round out my chin. I'm also going to take that to contour my nose. I'm going kind of straight down on the bridge and then when I get to the tip, I'm going to really want to contour under and on this line across right there. I take a smaller fluffy brush so I can be more precise with this and just intensify it a tiny bit more, blending it out. Basically want to contour like a circle around the tip of your nose. That really makes it look like a little button nose. And you can really take advantage of the different colored skin for this kind of stuff. You can go really heavy with the contouring and it won't look as unnatural as if you did it to your regular skin color. Then I'm also going to take that smaller brush to go under my bottom lip. I really want to accentuate that. I want to make my lips seem as juicy and pouty as possible. Because of that, I'm also going to shade the outer corners of my mouth. And you'll see that kind of instantly makes the mouth seem poutier. And I'm also going to take that little brush and contour my collarbone so that I can be really precise with the application. I'm going to take that other fluffy brush to contour down here. Bring this up a little bit. Once that's done, I'm going to map out where the gem is going to be. For that, I'm going to be using the NYX Faux White Liner in the color White Smoke. This is a very pale lilac pencil. I accidentally splashed some makeup remover on myself, so ignore these little shiny spots. That's going to dry. I have this little cup that I use to clean my brushes with, and I'm just going to place that where I want the gem to be and I'm just going to trace it. When doing something like a perfect circle, you could freehand it or you can save yourself the trouble. I think that's a little bit bigger than what I wanted but that's going to be our starting point. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the white cream color and use that to blend this out. I probably should have done this before I set everything. I realize that but I didn't think to do it. I'm just going to lightly blend that out. So now I'm gonna take that white on a fluffy brush and I'm just gonna use that to diffuse those edges even more. I'm gonna have to redo this chest contour to kind of fit the gem in here. I'm just kind of stamping this on and I'm just gonna redo this contour real quick. And I want to make sure to set that as well. Now I'm going to take a white eyeshadow. This is Zen by Cosette. And I'm going to take it on my little Dose of Colors brush. It's a really teeny tiny fluffy brush. I'm going to use it to really highlight that edge. I might actually use the little pencil brush on the other side so I can be more precise and then just blending it out with the other side. This will just really help to accentuate it a little bit more. Then what I'm going to do is take my planchette color from the Creepy Cute palette and I'm going to go right around that circle to simulate kind of a dip and then a raise. See, and that's just going to make it look a little bit more 3D, give it a little bit more volume. I know that I've said that you need to do things to add volume like a million times, but that's what you know, shading and highlighting is. That's why you gotta do it. And then I'm also gonna intensify that with Poison Plum a little bit. Now to start mapping it out, I'm gonna go in with my Wolf Essentials palette and I'm gonna be using the purple. This is also just a water activated face paint. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to trace that circle, just really define the outer edge. 
Now comes the part that is slightly terrifying to me, and that is drawing the actual gemstone. I'm gonna start mapping it out with some white face paint, and I'm gonna take that on my trusty liner brush. This is a paintbrush, it's not a makeup brush. I'm going to draw a small octagon in the center, and I'm just freehanding this. And then after that, I'm going to draw little triangles on every edge. I'm just going to kind of extend all the edges of the octagon. And then I'm going to extend those lines and create other triangles. They think are going to go all the way to the edge. And I'm just following a reference of an actual gemstone. And I also pulled up a few references of tattoos that people have done of realistic looking gemstones. And I think that's going to help me out a lot when figuring out how to fill this in and color it all in. Okay, I looked at a picture of one of those tattoos I was talking about and I'm actually going to draw in triangles here in the center. This is pretty easy if you get that first octagon right, then it's all about just extending the edges and creating more shapes out of that initial one. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with the Suva Beauty Hydra Liner in the color Grape Soda, and it is also water activated. I'm gonna use that to start shading in some of the shapes. This is gonna be hard to explain, but basically I'm shading one corner of one of the shapes, and then in the next shape over, I'm gonna be highlighting this corner. So I'm gonna want to shade a different corner and so on and so forth. And I'm trying to create gradients, even though it's hard with water activated paints, but I'm trying to make it darkest in like the corners and the edges around the shape. It's kind of like a free for all of creating other tiny little triangles within the bigger triangles. It's really hard and I really hope I get this right. It's really hard to even understand it looking at it, but hopefully this will look right in the end. Then once I've done those outer shapes, I'm gonna move to these bigger triangles, and for them, I'm going to create bigger shapes within them. This outer one was more like little shards. This one, I'm gonna create slightly bigger shapes. Still very shard-like. Then I'm gonna mix that in with some white and I'm going to highlight these little triangles. Ooh, that looks pink almost. Probably gonna change the color of some of them later, but for now I just wanna kind of know where they are. I'm gonna take pure white and do the top ones. These two, I'm gonna use the mixture for this one. Then the pure white for this one down here. Next, I'm gonna take some black on a teeny tiny brush and I'm going to further accentuate some of the corners. Kind of blend it into that other purple. I think what I'm actually gonna do is mix a little bit of blue into the black just to make it a little bit more interesting and add more depth to those areas rather than just a stark black. I'm gonna add some little blue shards in other areas. I'm gonna mix the blue a little bit with the purple. This is kind of just creating your own little coloring book. I'm just drawing a bunch of tiny little triangles. Now I'm gonna go in with the pink. I'm gonna do like little highlights. To make the stone look really multi-dimensional, you don't wanna just use purple. You wanna use other tones that are close to purple on the color wheel. And I also want to take some pure white, start doing little highlights just like I did with the pink. Then I'm going to go back in with the black and take it around the gemstone on the very perimeter. And this is going to be tricky. But I really just want to intensify the contrast between the gemstone and the skin. And then I'm also going to go ahead and do a few more little black shards just to add some more contrast to the gem. Now once all the black is done, I'm just gonna go in one last time with the white. I'm gonna use it to do some last little highlights here and there to really make sure that my whites are white. I think this is pretty much done. I think this is the best that I can do. It isn't exactly what I wanted it to be. I wanted it to have a little more volume, I feel like, it looks a little flat, but I honestly don't know how to paint gemstone, so I think this is a pretty good first try. I'm also gonna take that white and just highlight 
the very edge, not all along the gemstone, but in a few areas. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my eyebrows now. First, I'm just going to brush through them to make sure that they're all pointing the right direction because the face paint did stiffen them up a little bit. And I'm gonna start off with that same pencil that I used to map out the gemstone. I'm gonna use it at the very start. This is basically the color of my wig. I think this is a little too light for the eyebrows. I am going to darken them up, but I just wanted this as a kind of base. I'm going to try going in with the Smashbox Punked Eye Palette, and I'm going to be using this color right here. It's a very kind of gray toned purple. I'm going to use that to start defining the ends of the brows. That is insanely pigmented, and it doesn't read as purple when compared to the skin. Hmm. I'm gonna try this one. This one is more like a straight up gray. I think it could work. I think I'm gonna mix that with a little bit of poison plum. I don't want the brow to be super purple. I want it to be more neutral, but I do want it to tend towards purple. Now that I feel that I've got a pretty decent fade, I sharpen the pencil and I'm just gonna do a few little hair strokes here at the front. Just added some more poison plum along the middle of the brow. I'm just gonna take the clown white real quick on a little brush to clean up. Ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> just want a little bit just to clean up the brow. I'm using that to highlight the brow bone as well. Since I'm here, might as well. And then also just clean the top real quick. Now to prep my eyes, I'm gonna go in with the NYX Proof Fit Eyeshadow Primer and I'm going to apply that all over my lid top and bottom. Just gonna blend that out with a little fluffy brush. Then once my eyes are primed, I'm just going to set that real quick with planchette. Just apply that very lightly all over. For my lid, I'm gonna go in with the Huda Beauty Neon Pink Obsessions palette, and I'm gonna go with this bottom color right here. I don't know if it's gonna be a good lid color. It's kind of like a very sheer iridescence. Yeah, this is more like a topper, but let's see. Maybe I can wet this and get it to work more like a shadow rather than a topper. So I've got a dense brush. I'm going to wet it with some setting spray. Then I'm going to pick up that shadow and try applying it and see if it works a little bit better. Yeah, a little bit. It's still more like a topper than a proper shadow. Oh yeah, but that seems to be working pretty well, but now it's reading kind of pink. Oh, that's so weird. Also going to apply it to my bottom lid. Now I'm gonna take the Strobe Cosmetics Divinity Palette and I'm gonna be using the color Ketesh. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. And I'm gonna take that into my crease. I know this is a very highly shimmery shade, but it's going in the crease. We'll just make this whole eye shimmery, I guess. And then I'm gonna take that shadow under that first shadow that I used. Her eyes are very round, so I wanna do that little under eye bag trick that makes your eyes look super round. So I highlighted my little under eye bag and now I'm kind of contouring it and you can see that really makes it stand out and it definitely makes the eyes look rounder. I'm really kind of blending this out, extending this outwards. And then I'm also gonna take Poison Plum to intensify that a bit, just to really define that crease. Then to just intensify the crease a little bit more, I'm going in with my Black Moon Cosmetics Black Metal Palette and I'm taking the dark purple. Applying that right at my crease. Really making sure to bring that upwards so that it's visible when I have my eyes open. I'm also gonna take that under my eye. Then I just wanna line my eyes real quick. I'm gonna be using the NYX Epic Ink Liner. And I really want to round out the shape of my eye, so I'm going to draw a really narrow line here at the start and a narrow line at the end. But then in the center, I want to thicken it up a little bit. I also don't want it to be like a crazy thick liner. I do want it thicker in the center. And you can see that also helps to round out the shape of the eye. Now for the inner corner highlight, I'm gonna go in with the Lime Crime Diamond Crusher in the color Cloud 9. And I'm just gonna apply this straight to my inner corners, just blending it out with a little brush. These diamond crushers are honestly insane. They're so like metallic once you layer them. 
And I think I might add a drop of that right to the center of my lid just to intensify that shine a little bit. Now before finishing the eyes, I'm gonna move on to the lips. And I'm gonna start off with the NYX Liquid Suede in the color Amethyst, very appropriate, and then use a brush to apply it. And I'm really going to round out my lips. Like I want to not have a Cupid's bow shape whatsoever. I want it to be super round. And then I'm going to overdraw the outer corners. And then also really round out the bottom lip. Definitely want to overdraw more than this though. And I'm just going to take the excess off the center just so I can get a better idea of how it's looking. Then I'm also going to apply that in the very center of both my top and bottom lid. I'm doing like an upside down V in my top lip. Try to simulate her signature top lip. Then for the lighter color in the center, I'm going to be using the Liquid Suede in the color Sway. And I'm just going to apply that where I didn't apply the darker color. And I'm just going to blend those two together. Wait for that to set a bit so that I can darken this again. And I'm also going to darken my actual Cupid's bow just so it gets a little bit hidden. Then to further intensify the shading, I'm going to take the Black Moon Cosmetics lipstick in the color Purgatory. It is a very dark purple. Then I'm also going to use it to further darken the lip outline. And then going back in with the lighter color, these four points of the lips. And then I just want to take the Lime Crime Unicorn Lipstick in the color Delilah just to further highlight these little spots. Now that we've got this sweet lip illusion going on, I want to add a little bit of blush to the cheeks and I'm going to go in with the Lunatic Cosmetics Contour Palette Volume 2. I'm going to be using this shade right here on a very, very fluffy brush because I want to be very light handed with this. I just want to gently apply that to the apples of my cheeks. I feel like it needs to be a little more pinky. So I'm going to take the NYX blush in the color Baby Doll. I'm also going to put a little bit of this on the bridge of the nose and under the nose and on the sides of the nose. And I'm also going to put some on the bottom of my chin. Now I do want to contour the nose a tiny bit more so I'm going to take Poison Plum again and I'm just going to... Whoa, that's a lot of Poison Plum. I'm just going to concentrate that contouring on the sides of my nose under and then a little bit right across. Now I just want a tiny bit of highlight so I'm going in with the MAC Extra Dimension Skin Finish in the color Soft Frost and this has a purple sheen to it. It might not seem like it but yeah there we go. And I'm just going to take my blush brush, blush brush, say that three times fast and then just run it on my cheekbones. It's a very, very subtle glow. I'm gonna take that onto the bridge of my nose, onto the tip of my nose, onto my chin, onto my brow bone. I'm also gonna take that onto the high points of my body just to add a little extra something. And I think this might be a compulsion, I don't know, but I am gonna add freckles. I apologize if you're tired of freckles. They're not going anywhere. I'm going to take the purple wool face paint onto my little teeny tiny brush and then I'm just going to dot very few but still some just around the nose area. I just like dotting them on and then patting them to kind of spread them around and make it look a little more natural even though nothing about this look is natural. And I also just want to intensify the shading around the mouth corners just real quick. Now we're almost done. I'm going to line my waterline with that same pencil that I've been using, the NYX one. This is almost white, but it's got a little hint of purple to it. So it's gonna be perfect for really opening up my eyes, but it still has that little hint of purple. Then I'm gonna load up on some mascara. I'm gonna use the Kush Waterproof Mascara, and I'm gonna load my top and bottom lashes with this. And I'm doing two layers of the mascara. 
Now for fake lashes, I'm going to be using the Violet Voss lashes in the style Fire and Eyes. I've never used anything from Violet Voss before, but I saw these at the store and they are insane. They're like every type of lash stacked together. So I was like, okay, I have to have this. This lash has possibly the thickest band I've ever seen, but it's also like a bunch of lashes stacked together, but that's kind of crazy. It's like three lash bands stuck together. Even though the lash band is really thick, it's shaped a lot rounder than some lashes, so it really fits into my eye really, really well, and it's surprisingly comfortable. And now I'm going in with the Elevation Lashes Freedom 9 on my bottom lash line. Just gonna use a few little tufts, one in the outer corner and another one here, right in the center. And that's it for the makeup. I'm gonna go put on my wig and I'll come back to show you the finished look. And this is the finished look. I feel so cute as Amethyst. Yeah, there's so much hair. This wig is like so long. The wig cap is very small though, so there's not a lot of hair to the wig, but it is quite long. And this eye should be covered up like so. I'm actually pretty happy with how this came out, but this took way longer than I anticipated. It is now 4.20 a.m. <laughs> 4.20. Yeah, I don't know. I like the purple. I like all the purple. God, I don't even know what to say. It's so late. I'm so tired and hungry. If you stuck around to the end, then I appreciate you so, so much. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all my patrons who support me. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow for another Halloween tutorial. I'll see you then. Bye.